Hello everybody, welcome to the Football Daily Weekly. Good to have you with us. Lawrence is here, of course. Hi. And Squawker Dave. Hi, Daily. Squawker Dave. This week we're going to be talking about the Copper America. Yes, that's right, everybody. The Copper America is on this summer. We've got yes. some good footballing tournaments this summer. The Women's World Cup is also underway. Uh, England Under-21s will be playing in the Under-21 tournament. Uh, the Gold Cup as well, featuring the US. That's great. Maybe even one or two more. Mm -hmm. The Emirates Cup will be... Coming that'll back, yeah, that'll be around. <laughs> but this week we're focusing on the Copa America, a fantastic tournament which mm. will feature all of the South American nations, apart from like Guyana and Suriname and, yeah. and those ones. Jamaica and Mexico have also been asked because they always have two uh, invited nations. Mexico are always there. The US have been there a few times. Japan have been there uh, once upon a time, but Jamaica uh, won't do it. Jamaica have got it hard this year. They do have it tough. It's a, it's a very good pool of talent down in South America, as it often is. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Jamaica coming in, especially uh, you know down in Chile, the Chileans are looking very strong at the moment. They've never won the tournament. Uh, Chile, obviously hosting, and mm -hmm. that, that that might help them out. Um, but I'd still think there are stronger sides there. Mm -hmm. um, and you know we've seen the likes of Argentina, Brazil. Although those two might meet each other. So that's if if the draw goes correct. You know Argentina win their group, correct. Brazil win their uh, group. It'll be Argentina versus Brazil in the semi final if they win their last other game as well. So that's one side of the tournament. The other side probably going to see the likes of either Chile, uh, Colombia, or Uruguay getting to the other final. So Argentina, Chile looks like it could be on. But you look at Brazil, Dunga coming back in, going back to the sort of two defensive midfielders. You know likes of. Maybe Fernandinho and Casano, who's had a brilliant season at Porto. Mm -hmm. They could be sitting in there. Then you've got Neymar, who gets such freedom when he plays for Brazil. He's quite shackled at Barcelona, even though he scored a load of goals this season. Joint top scorer in the Champions League. Feel that he doesn't get the chance to like completely express himself. He has a role in that side. Whereas for Brazil, he is the main man. He could blow this tournament absolutely apart. But that was the mistake they made in the, in the last tournament they were in. Well, was that the last tournament? I think yeah. They, yeah, in the World Cup. They, yeah. they had freedom, but they didn't have enough structure. What Dunga brings in is this structure, these defensive mm. midfielders that are sitting there that are going to cover the fullbacks. The Brazil at the World Cup were just opened up because there was no real structure there. There was no real formation, no real... But emotionally, they were all over the place. Oh, as well, yeah. yeah. Whereas, whereas, whereas Dunga... Um, you know, Drill Sergeant Dunga is not having any of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Argentina haven't won the tournament since 1993, which is quite surprising. And Chile have never won it, uh, as we said before. And the tournament's been around since 1916. Mm. It's quite surprising, really. That, and um, Uruguay have won it most times. Uruguay have won it 15 times, Argentina 14, Brazil 8. Yeah. Even that is, is, is a little bit surprising. Uruguay without Luis Suarez, that's we have to remember. Really, I think that's really critical as well, because mm. who, who do they bring in instead of Suarez? Well, potentially without Suarez, because mm. apparently they're going to appeal it. They're going to appeal it, but, but presumably they he's will not lose there. That, yeah. The Cavani would be the main man, Lawrence? Yeah. But, even, but even then, you're saying that's not the same factor that Luis Suarez gives the team. Not at all. And it's not the same movement. I mean, Cavani is no, a great of player, but he's not had the same season as Suarez. Mm -hmm. um, this, he's, Suarez is somewhat of a talismanic figure, it seems. He had a pretty decent away. season, Cavani, but you, you look but at... Not by Suarez's standards, no, but he's not the same. No, not no, but Suarez, he will yeah. be the man they will look to Yes. in the absence of Suarez. But look, look at what happens to Uruguay when they don't. Have Suarez. It's mm -hmm. quite a different, quite a different movement in their side then, uh, because they don't have the same movement as Suarez. Mm. But they won't have him. So, so what, what do you think they'll do, Dave? I think they'll, they'll set up defensively. Yeah. You know, Oscar's been Oscar Tabrezi. Yeah. Like yeah. Has been their manager for a number of. You know, plays a four four. Tabarez. 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 Yeah, that's the correct pronunciation. Mm. Thank Sorry. you, Marcus. But I think they'll play a, a quite a structured system. We're trying to get the best out of Cavani through the middle. Um, you got Nicholas. Labrado, I think, is the one that used to play. Uh, yeah, in the centre of the pitch. Ajax, yeah, apparently he's you know, back at Boca Juniors, back in South America. That's right. Having a bit of, a better time of it at the moment, you know, creating things, pretty much the heartbeat of that side. So you'd see him, he needs to come into this Uruguay side, that to sort of take precedence, but you can't really, I can't really see them. You know, you look at Uruguay after they lost Suarez at the World Cup against Colombia, mm. they're pretty toothless. They looked a bit toothless, and I think the Suarez factor is going to pretty much harm them and harm their. Potential winning of the tournament. Yeah, I mean, they are, I think they are the holders of the tournament at the moment. And yeah. when they when they did win it, they were very very solid. Yeah. Um, and they had a, a couple of uh, tenacious players in, in the centre of the pitch mm -hmm. going for it. But in the World Cup, as you say, with Suarez there and all, they did have a little bit more craft. But but they, they, they may well miss it. What about Chile though, Lawrence? I mean, they looked fantastic at the World Cup and they did. were very close to beating Brazil. And they have almost this uh, mental barrier against Brazil. Now, even if even if they didn't win that game, perhaps against that particular side, mm -hmm. that barrier may have been brought down somewhat. Well, it'll also be brought down. I'll reference that again because they're at home. I know it sounds mm. cliché. No, no, but it yeah. is a good. It yeah. is an important yeah. thing. Yeah, I mean, to be hosting a tournament is a huge thing. In the first mm. place, we saw that with Brazil. You wonder 
I think it's a slightly different thing for Chile, obviously hosting this mm -hmm. one. It's not the same as hosting the World Cup. But at the same time, you'd say there's a couple of echelons of teams within this tournament, right? So it goes Argentina, Brazil at the very top. Then you have your Chile's. Uruguay's probably in that list Columbia. as well. Columbia. And Colombia was yeah. the third team I was going to mention there. And there's a possibility that Colombia will mm. come up directly against uh, Chile in the draw. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, that's where you say, you know, who's, who's going to win in that one. Despite Chile being the slightly less uh, strong side, because actually Colombia are quite a strong team. And yeah. Falcao managed to score. Falcao, Baca, you know, Cuadrado, exactly. all these excellent players. James Rodriguez. James Rodriguez, and we're not top scorer at the World Cup. Mm. You know, the, if they get the blend right, they could be really, I think it'll be. It would be Chile, Colombia, then Brazil, Argentina on the other side of the draw. Yeah. I don't think Uruguay are going to cut the mustard, but you know, you look at the counter-attacking ability that Colombia had at the World Cup, they're going to bring that again. Carlos Bacca has had a good season. Cuadrado is going to be an interesting one. He hasn't played much for Chelsea, mm -hmm. but he's a fantastic player. He played very well first half of the season for Fiorentina, obviously mm -hmm. got the move. But he's had a bit of time off, so he might be fresh. He might be really fresh, really yeah. up for this tournament. He could be the best player there. Yeah, how, well, do, you, how do you rate the Colombians? Um, yeah, very highly. Also, I mean, Jackson Martinez as well. Yeah, as another, well. They've got a great forward line. They've got so line. much. You know, yeah. if, um, mm. The lad that played for Borussia Dortmund, who I've forgotten his name, Adrian Ramos. Yeah. They've got four strikers there that are pretty decent. Absolutely. They've got a lot of strengths yeah, yeah, yeah. there. Really. Sorry, but you were going to say, Lawrence. Well, I mean, we saw the Maraud. We saw a fantastic football from Chile and you know, mm. the excitement of Alexi. Yeah. Uh, and, and they've got genuine superstars now in that too. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, Sanchez so, and Vidal. Maybe. I mean, that's what's interesting. As soon as they break it in Europe, then we call them superstars. You know, they, um, he had, he'd had a fantastic uh, tournament. He, he's... He had a fantastic time with Barcelona before he went to Arsenal, you know. And he, yeah, but I, well, yeah, I don't think anybody would have. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. think he's become a superstar now that he's at Arsenal. Yeah, but what, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that in that they they've got some players who the movement's very different to any kind of other yeah. uh, South American side. And I wonder if that will be the undoing of certain teams like Uruguay. They yeah. just won't be able to cope with mm. the likes of Chile. We've not even spoken about Argentina yet. Have we not? No. no. Well, that's the interesting thing is when you said the talismanic guy, the guy who takes the tournament. Guess who's back for Argentina? No. Carlos Tevez. Do you thought Maradona? Mm. You, no. <laughs> okay, but he's fixing football. Carl, yeah, he's fixing football. Carlos Tevez. He's back in there. Yeah. The people's player. The yeah, people's the people's player. player. Think about that. Mm. That is incredible. I don't, I don't, again, Argentina have so many forwards. I wouldn't put Carlos Tevez in my side. But then why are they including this him? This is the thing, it's crazy. He's a, such, a, such a good player, but you look at Aguero, who's going to be ahead of him. You've got to say 26 goals in the Premier League carried Man City at times. Tevez has carried Juventus. This is why it's so interesting, why they have such mm. a good blend. That might be the, the thing for it. I think Tevez would work better in the side, but I think they'll go with Aguero. Tevez would fit perfectly, play that Suarez role uh, that um, Suarez think it, it plays was, at, at Barca. Iguain's not a starter for them, No, right? definitely not. Probably not, he's, although he's part of the squad. Aguero, did, Aguero did not score in the World Cup. Fred scored but, more goals but, than Aguero, Aguero, Aguero was in the World we Cup. We forget that Aguero had a really bad spell of injury before the World Cup. Mm -hmm. He didn't look fit throughout the whole tournament. And at yeah. the start, that's why I thought Argentina are not going to win the World Cup because Aguero is not looking sharp. Aguero yeah. is either on it or not on it, and he mm -hmm. wasn't on it at the World Cup. Okay. So this could, you know, you could look for this could be his tournament. You know, like so Lionel Messi, who's had a fantastic season again. If they get the team functioning around him, they get, per I think, Pereira, the uh, yep. uh, Juventus midfielder, mm -hmm. getting him playing that sort of right central midfield. I think they have to go with a 4-3-3. Him on the right side of the central midfield, playing the Rakitic role and covering Mascherano. Messi. Mascherano at the base, you know, Otamende and... Uh, Dima Chalis, the centre half. Yeah. You know, they've yeah. got a very decent team. Hmm. Yeah, I mean that, and they've got a lot of options in how they can play formationally as well. Yeah. I mean, do they sit two at the centre of the midfield? Do they just go one with Mascherano and then and more hmm. players yeah. forward? So they've got a lot of options mm -hmm. there. But I mean, it's really going to be how the front shapes up. So you know, do you play Tevez in there? Do you play Tevez in the ground? Yeah. Do you play Messi in them as a false nine and mm -hmm. then have other guys yeah. off him? So it's going to be interesting. I think they learned a lot about themselves at the last World Cup mm. and how they are a tournament side. Uh, who they need to balance out their, themselves yeah. and they lack the Tevez sure. maybe as a character within the squad or some sort of um, a rally point what? for the fans which Messi is not yeah. necessarily I think they also lacked control in midfield and we've seen a Ava Benega in the Europa League been absolutely awesome he's mm. got he's back yeah, in the team point, he played in the, the friendly that was at the weekend you know mm. he, he's a real dictator he can control yeah. the game that's someone that they, they, they lack. Sure. That's in there now. No, but, uh, pack full of quality. So uh, the Argentinians speak for themselves. Chile, the hosts. Right. Colombia uh, as well. Brazil under Dunga. I mean, yeah. uh, that, I mean this, this actually, the, 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 are, if I remember correctly, the last tournament wasn't uh, too exciting. No. A different and time in football. I think, this, wasn't it? I think Paraguay got to the final without even winning a game, yeah, if, I, if, if my memory serves me correctly. So Might this could happen. be a fantastic Copa America. Dave, a little prediction then. Who do you fancy for the Tournament. Argentina. Argentina. Obviously, they are favourites, but I think they've got it. Yeah. They, they've, they've 
pretty much already won it. Sure. In my eyes, Lawrence, Argentina. I think they'll play Chile in the final. Yeah. I'd love it if they played Chile in the final. I, th I think Argentina's a fit. I, th I think about Dunga and his pragmatism. They could. You know, they'll get far. But the heart says Chile. I want them to win. I think they're fantastic. They were great at the World Cup. It was a shame that they went out in the second round. Mm. Um, their first tournament win, I think, is going to be Chile. Let us know in the comments below who you think is going to win the Copa America. Thank you very much, Dave. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Lawrence. Do watch the tournament. It's going to be absolutely fantastic, and we'll see you soon.